the managers will post things that are wrong with the pub on Facebook and expect us to grass on each other. I mean, they're always chipping away at things and squeezing us. The main reason I joined the union is because I believe in collective action. Mm. So all of us are better than one of us. We really struggle to get by on these income levels. A fellow colleague of mine came up to me the other day and he didn't have any money on his break for his break. All he had was enough to buy a slice of bread and butter. <sighs> Sounds like something straight out of the Middle Ages, doesn't it? <laughs> then she started shouting at one of the union members and it was a woman who had suffered ma like major depression and had tried to commit suicide before. <sighs> and that, that really fucked me off. My life as a bar worker. Part two in the four-part well-read series on work. Laura, you've told me that you work in a seaside town for a large pub chain. Can you tell me what you do there? Yeah, so I am a bar team leader um, and I'm second up from the bottom. So it's my job to make sure that the bar's all running smoothly and the staff are doing what they're supposed to be doing. I have been there for about three and a half years and I'm on a zero hour contract. And if you don't mind me asking, how much do you earn in that job? Okay, so since, I've, since we've been organising the union campaign about six months ago, they've reduced my hours from 45 hours a week to 30 hours a week. So right now I'm not hitting 10 grand a year. And they even reduced my hours at Christmas, which is our busiest period, to 20 hours a week. And as you can imagine, that was pretty tough because that's when you really need the money. Now, I've been doing some research on the CEO of your chain and it turns out that he takes home about a hundred times more salary than you do. Um, how do you feel about that and how do you get by on the salary that you get? Well, how do I feel? I feel absolutely furious. I mean, it's a bit of an insult, isn't it? I mean, it's not like he eats a hundred times more food than I do. And he certainly doesn't work a hundred times harder. <laughs> yeah, we really struggle to get by on these income levels. I mean, I'm not lying when I say this, but a fellow employee, a fellow colleague of mine came up to me the other day and he didn't have any money on his break for his break. All he had was enough to buy a slice of bread and butter. So I said to him, how much has he got? He said he had 85p in his pocket. Well, I, I couldn't give him any money. I was skint that day myself. <sighs> Sounds like something straight out of the Middle Ages, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, you see these trainees? Mm. A friend gave me those. He donated them to me because I didn't have any. The bike you saw when you came in, a friend gave me that because I can't afford to drive. I've had one holiday in the past couple of years, and that was a four-day city break in Amsterdam and I've not had any savings in the bank since some time last year. I mean, there's, don't get me wrong, there's people here, people with kids, and they really, really struggle to get by. Um, I mean, most of the workers here over the age of 25 all receive working tax credits so that they can live. But the taxes that you pay are going towards a working tax payment to those workers who are on lower income levels so that they can live. <laughs> it's so screwed up. So why do you think a union is needed and, and how is the campaign going? Well, the main reason I joined the union is because I believe in collective action. Hmm. So all of us are better than one of us. And I think that um, with trade unionism in the workplace and campaigns such as a union, um, 10 pounds and a union and hungry for justice are some great ways about being in change in our massively flawed political and economic system. <laughs> mm. I mean, for instance, in my case, when I first started working here, we only got 20% off what we bought on our breaks. Um, we only got two days notice of the next week's rota. <laughs> our holidays were given to us and we were told about them a day before the holiday started and that was a frustrating because you can't book anything um, and we had to do these meetings once a month which we didn't get paid for but 
as soon as the manager found out that we were organising the union, she suddenly changed her mind on all of these things. So the union scared her into action. We're not a registered union. I mean, there's only a handful of us. So you could say at the moment that we're defending our rights. And if we became a recognised union, then we could go out and win new rights. But I understand that it hasn't been all plain sailing in your campaign. No, it hasn't been. Um, So a couple of us sent out some Facebook messages for the union and they were only to be read by union members. And these messages contained complaints about the conditions of the pub. So one of the staff members joined the union for a day. So had access to all of the messages on Facebook for a day. Why did she join the union? So she could find out who was in the union. But I don't think she realised that she would have access to all of the direct messages about the complaints and the transcripts about the management. What happened next? So then she took a list of complaints and manuscripts to the manager. Um, and the manager had one-to-ones with all of the union members, except for me. She disciplined us and she had a go of us in front of the whole staff. She was saying that she felt bullied by the union online and how they were twisting things and how they were saying this and that. She said that the union was bullying her online and she felt threatened by that, which was obviously not the case. So one reading so one meeting that she had in the customer area of the pub, um, she was reading a transcript from Facebook, which she just received from Facebook, and then she started shouting at one of the union members, and it was a woman who had suffered ma- like major depression and had tried to commit suicide before. And she started saying things like, you've been saying this about me in those posts. Don't you remember how we stood by you all those months ago? Don't you remember how we looked after you when you tried to kill yourself? And she said all of this in front of another union member who didn't know anything about this. Didn't have a clue. And that that really fucked me off, you know? And since then, people have been scared about joining the union but I think that will change soon Now, are there a lot of suicides in the fast food business? From my experience yeah there's been two incidents down at the Pete's place down at the seaside front and there's been this one attempt at our place Why do you think people do this? Because they've got no other option. Because they've been given such a shit situation. I mean, the life they've been given is a life full of zero-hour contracts on minimum wage. I mean, when I, when I first became an adult, this town, before all this austerity, all these austerity measures kicked in, our little town by the seaside, it used to be such a beautiful little place. And you know, there were so many beautiful little parks, and you could go for wonderful walks. But then all these cuts happened, and the place just started to look like crap. And then tourism started to fall, which affects my, which worries me because it affects my job because now I'm not making as much money as I did when tourism was around. Mm-hmm. And that's my government's doing. Now, a friend of mine was recently in another pub in the same chain and had a conversation with a waiter, and it, it went something like this. So he said, um, the breakfast I've just had was 30 minutes late and I was in a bit of a hurry. And the waiter said, sorry, but we've had a few people call in sick. And my friend said, well, hang on, this is a big pub. It's in a big chain. Surely the management have ways to deal with this uh, when this happens. And the waiter said, well, no, it's, it's not management's fault. It's our fault. Can you explain that last statement, Laura? 
I think sometimes conflicting ideas can exist in workers' minds. So individualism and collectivism. So, I mean, you'll often see in pubs and this with the boss, and this always happens in our place, um, that they will get the praise for when we hit targets and when the pub makes a lot of money. It's only collective when it's a negative thing mm. and it's only individual when it's a positive thing. So I think that worker thinks that it's the staff's fault when they don't turn up for the shift. But the food industry is a really stressful environment and people need time off. So, yes, I think that's a strong identification between the pub chains and other companies. I mean, effectively, we're the face of the brand and it's similar in McDonald's. Now, entry-level workers in your chain are called associates. Why do you think that is? You know, I've, I've never really thought about that word before and what it means. But, I mean, thinking about it, it makes it sound like it's not a staff member. It's more of, or it's not a worker, it's more of a self-employed role that you would take on, that the chain would take on. That you're not a worker, but rather that you're self-employed and you go into the pub chain as a barman. So like a plumber, like a self-employed plumber would do. And they always try and promote this idea of us being one big happy family, which is unusual in our place, because they literally are a big family. <laughs> so you've got the wife and the husband and the three kids who all run the bar, but many of the bar staff are close friends um, to the family. So there's a lot of nepotism in the workplace. So the, uh, the youngest daughter's just been promoted to a shift leader but she's not had any of the correct training or anything like that to, for the promotion. Now, have you ever thought about applying to move up the so-called career ladder at your pub? I have no intention whatsoever of going up that ladder. I worked at McDonald's for four years and I was a manager there and it was a stressful environment and I promised myself that I would never work in this industry as a manager again. I mean, the managers here, they only get paid 50p more an hour than I do. And it's it's just not worth it. Not at all. I mean, the workload that they get, it's insane. And the things that they have to do. So they're expected to keep social media updated all the time. And you've got to have the safe keys on you at all times. And, and it's not like you can go out for a ciggy break or anything. <laughs> but saying that, McDonald's was pretty tough. I mean, the managers had to walk around every half hour, the, bar, the rest of the staff. And they had to pull people up immediately if they did something wrong. And the staff felt that the managers were breathing down their necks all the time. At times it felt like working in a factory, especially when we were busy. What pleasure, what satisfaction do you get from working in a bar? Well, I really like working at the pub. I mean, I love being with the customers and working with the staff. I mean, the, the customers, they're, they're so lovely. I mean, I remember when I first started working there, I thought, Ooh, they look a bit rough. I <laughs> don't know how I'm going to quite get on with them. Um, but I mean, a few years into the job, and yeah, they're, they're absolutely lovely. Mm. Um, I've got a really good rapport with the customers. And yeah, you got you get your odd bods, the eccentric lot, but they're, they're great too. Mm. Um, and I'm an outgoing person. And this kind of environment, it's it's perfect for me because I'm a happy, chatty, bubbly person. Mm. So, and my work is really, really important to me. And But do you feel engaged by the job? Sometimes I do. Mm. 
But I mean, sometimes it's uh, my mind wanders off onto different things. I guess it just depends which manager's in. <laughs> <laughs> How does the management treat the staff? Well, I mean, they're always chipping away at things and squeezing us. Mm. I mean, we used to open at seven. Well, we used to start work at seven in the morning um, so that we could open up for the customers at eight o'clock. But now we get paid from 7.15. So, and right now we need that extra 15 minutes because we've released a whole load of new products. So, for instance, things take a lot longer in the mornings now. So, for example, when we're chopping up fruit, we need to chop up more fruit because of the new products. Mm. So it takes more time. So don't get me wrong, I mean, staff feel like they have to come in earlier at seven o'clock so then that way they can get the job done but they're only being paid from 7 15 but the managers will kick off if nothing's ready <laughs> so effectively staff are not getting paid for the work that they're doing mm. another example um the managers will post things that are wrong with the pub on facebook and expect us to grass on each other <laughs> yeah and um, they have CCTV cameras on us at all times. Now, fair enough, it's fine to have CCTV over the till, but when the managers are watching the CCTV more than the till, that becomes a problem. And it feels like they're always watching. Mm. Now, that we don't know if that's true. Nothing's been proved yet, but it's kind of like having Big Brother on your case. <laughs> mm. Now... I was reading an interview with the head, the CEO of the company, mm -hmm. and he said that the company uh, adopts a very democratic approach to running pubs, mm -hmm. creating an inclusive environment uh, for all the staff to be involved in changes and ideas. Uh, in your experience, is, is this, well, <laughs> does this work? Is, is, is... Um, well, I can, see, I can see his point, because there is an initiative called Tell Tim, <laughs> Um, where they give you a fiver if you give an idea that Tim likes. But as for it being a democracy, I don't, I don't really think so. I mean, I think it would be more democratic if we got to choose the ideas. Mm. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming in and all the very best with the union. Thanks.